this fact that we're opening this window to the universe and allow to look deeper and deeper is what really contributes to my motivation working in this field. The future is, is big. Every day is exciting to think that there could be this next big thing coming along. In addition to those exciting moments for discovery and detection, there are also a lot of challenges. Curiosity-driven research is what really leads to advance. Oh, this is a complete scam. It's the fun to do the tinkering and the ideas to build those metrology machines. But then in the end, it's the excitement to see that this large science comes out of it in the understanding of you know, the universe and our little place in it. Humans have been sitting around on Earth for you know, many, many thousands, millions of years. We've been looking up at the sky and all of the, the ways we've been looking at it have been using, you know, light in particular, because we could see, uh, and eventually radio waves and, and so on. And gravitational waves are not part of that spectrum. It's an entirely new spectrum. And this opened up the universe to observing all these things we couldn't see before. Einstein realised this and he thought these gravitational waves would never be detectable. And for 20 or 30 years since I've been working in the field, I think I also thought it seemed an impossible task. Now we have a different channel. There are a whole lot of new things we can do to understand the universe and the cosmos. The field is very exciting and we want to go after the big questions. We're definitely not shying away from the big questions. We're gunning for them. And it's from here on that we can really look to these, these very big discoveries. Gravitational waves are essentially ripples in space-time. Generated by only the mo most dramatic uh, events in, in the universe, collisions of black holes, neutron stars, supernovae. You can imagine like if those very massive compact objects like black holes, neutron stars are moving and they are orbiting each other. They trigger the ripples in the space time and that spread out traveling at the speed of light. What a gravitational wave does is ripples is when it passes through the earth, it changes the separation between objects. So we can use laser beams to measure that change in separation. And those ripples are tiny, tiny, and it's really hard to measure and really hard to detect. So we need those extremely sensitive gravitational wave detectors which can measure the change in distance. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do, except when you realize just how small this effect is. A passing gravitational wave will change the separation between two objects, which are, say, four kilometers apart, by less than a thousandth of the size of a proton. That's ridiculously small. At the fine scale, we're making like some of the most precise measurements of length that anyone's ever made. A billionth of a billionth of a meter. And on that level, literally everything matters. They're trying to measure a displacement of about 10 to the minus 19 meters. That is really small. I have difficulty actually understanding what it is. So we began at the ANU to build on this idea by developing detectors to try and sense gravitational waves. And we have a large lab which does research in developing new technologies which we can use and which we then upgrade and integrate into the large gravitational wave detectors. Gravitational wave detectors, they are phenomenal machines. The detectors are really huge. We have two LIGO interferometers which have four kilometer long arms in the United States. So the first detection of gravitational waves happened with the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Waves Observatory or LIGO for short. So teams from ANU had spent months and years on sites in the United States installing systems that we designed here, tested here and then installed into LIGO. When advanced LIGO was, was being built and constructed in the early 2010s, we were part here at ANU in developing those uh, smaller suspended steering mirrors and also the arm length stabilization system. We developed quite a number of the subsystems uh, for the LIGO data analysis system. So we had that 
important role that we were part of that first discovery through this international collaboration. Being part of the first detection and discovery of gravitational wave has been a fantastic opportunity and experience for me. The collaboration at that stage was about a thousand people across the world. And I got this email at like 9.15 p.m. and it said there's been this really extraordinary signal in the dete LIGO detectors in the last hour. So I kind of dropped everything. When we first learned about this and looked at the data, I think we were all pretty skeptical because it had been such a long time in the making and we uh, needed to prove that beyond shadow of a doubt that it really was a signal from outer space. So that initial feeling is tempered by, is it real? And by, you know, sort of a, an hour or two later, it became very clear that it was the real deal. As that reality grew, the excitement grew until we could finally acknowledge and reveal to the world this first detection. You know, it was a sleepless night. It was just so exciting. Finally, it had happened. You know, I'd been working on this project for the best part of 20 years by then. At the time, we were all excited that it would happen, but we never anticipated it would be so soon and so loud and so clear. It's really an exciting moment. That's sort of a, a beginning of a new era in astronomy. At the announcement, it was really an event which brought the world together. We have detected gravitational waves. We did it. And that was also very exciting to be there and feel the vibe in that newsroom when David Wrightsey announced the, uh, the announcement. It was, it was all very exciting and it was very uh, honoured to be there and have worked so hard with all these other teammates. The first detection of gravitational waves was an immense scientific discovery, you know, probably the discovery of the century. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics for decisive contributions to the LIGO detector and the observation of gravitational waves. So it didn't stop once we'd measured the first signals. It just proved we now needed to build better and better detectors. But then two years later was the binary merging neutron star and astronomers were ready uh, for that event. And it was probably the most observed astronomical object in history. So practically every single telescope on the planet that could target the object was observing it. So the research we've done here in the manipulation of the quantum state of light has taken decades. So we started with squeezing light source and now that is now installed in the LIGO to improve the quantum noise performance of the LIGO machines. And at some point we're also able in this lab to get the squeezing down to the kilohertz where gravitational waves are operational. So that was a major breakthrough that was achieved here in this lab. So in this lab, it's a variety of precision experiments. We're really designing experiments that can probe the universe in multiple ways. What we are looking over here in this experiment is testing materials that are going to be used for next generation of future gravitational wave detectors. We're in the ANU's new uh, uh, clean room facility. We've been contracted to make the new beam splitters for LIGO, but just the opportunity to uh, contribute hardware of, of, of this type, these like actual optics that are gonna be used in LIGO um, uh, is, is an incredible feeling. The nice thing about working at CGA is that we really do have some cool technology here. So there's a lot of tools in our tool belt that we can bring to play to solve these problems. These are new fields of research that nowhere else as it encompasses with all the activities we do in the lab is available and we're very proud and of course very keen to keep going that research. I think it's one of the things that keeps us experimentalists going is that even though the goal may be ambitious and may be a long way off, along the way we're developing technologies for other applications that have importance and that keep us going. There's countless examples through history where fundamental physics was driven, our understanding developed, technologies came from that with no initial apparent use that have now firmly found their place in our society. So all of the unique techniques and methods for precision measurement, we take those ideas 
that have been developed in the context of gravitational wave detection and see what other applications we can find that can benefit from that kind of really precise way of doing optical measurement. We're always pushing the boundaries what currently is available, but we're pushing those boundaries because in the end we want to have that science to understand the universe and then back on Earth what that actually all means. It seems like you're aiming for something really big and what you're going to try and answer individually as a person is something small and to see how it fits in that grand picture, you're like a small piece of puzzle that solves it. Your laboratory is all around you. So sometimes it's just nice to exit the control room, go outside on the catwalk, have a look around you, and you can see you know, what you're studying. I would say this is just the starting point of gravitational wave astronomy. It's, it's not like we have detected that and that's it. That's just the beginning. We can go the whole way. So it can be an absolute probe of the very earliest universe. And uh, that's obviously a, a big goal of gravitational waves and their detections to get sensitive enough to, to really unlock the early universe.